Hello everybody, uh, welcome to Cardi Gallery's uh, Zoom webinar this evening. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are dedicating this to Mimortella, uh, just talking about his practice, especially focusing to um, the works from the 60s and 70s, uh, most of which we have featured here uh, in an exhibition which is called Beyond the Collage, Photo uh, Motions and Articles, 1963-1980. Uh, here at Cardi Gallery, London in Mayfair. And today we happen also to celebrate uh, what would have been uh, Mimo's birthday. And we have a tiny cupcake for him as well. Uh, I'm here with uh, two very special guests tonight that have agreed to join us. Um, we have Antonella uh, Soldaini, who is the director of the Mimo Rotella Institute, uh, based in Milan. Um, thank you, Antonella, for joining us. Thank you. She is, uh, you know, besides being the director of, uh, of the Institute, she um, also curated the exhibition and co-curated with Veronica Locatelli, the catalogue, uh, who's accompanying the show. Um, the other panelist tonight is uh, Elizabeth Mangini. She is, I'm going to read this because the job title is very long, sorry. Uh, the Associate Professor and Chair of History of Art and Visual Culture at CCA in San Francisco. Um, Elizabeth uh, also is on the board uh, as a scientific um, member of the scientific, scientific committee sorry, of the Mimorotella Institute and she has also written about Mimorotella's practice uh, in several instances. So thank you ladies for joining us. Uh, I will start by asking a question to Antonella. Um, and, you know, if she could just introduce um, the exhibition a little bit for the public, I, I imagine quite a few people would not actually have had the chance to visit it, unfortunately, um, due to, lock to lockdown and, uh, you know, some travel restrictions as well. So, Antonello, if you can take the floor. Okay, uh, I hope you hear me because uh, your voice was a little problematic, but, but um, the important thing is that uh, you, you hear me well. So, uh, yes, I think it um, um, would be nice to know that uh, the relationship with the, the Cardi Gallery started uh, actually um, uh, in, 19, in 2016, because uh, we made uh, a show on, uh, in, in uh, Milan, in the Gallery Milan, and the, the show was dedicated to a, a special technique by Rotella that is called, um, he was calling these uh, works uh, blanks. That means uh, that these are kind of uh, abstract uh, works made uh, with uh, um, a manifesto that is a, a monochromatic manifesto. So would be, would, uh, that was uh, uh, the first chance uh, uh, of a good collaboration with the, um, a gallery because uh, they, you, know, you allowed us to show a special um, moment of Mimo Rotella's, uh, um, uh, inside the Mimo Rotella's uh, career. And uh, because Rotella, of course, is uh, uh, famous for, you know, is uh, well known for his uh, the collapse that is, you know, the main uh, technique that he, he used uh, all uh, his life. But uh, our goal is uh, to um, try to make people understand that uh, Rotella was um, experimented, experimenting during his life with uh, these different techniques. And uh, the reason is that he was really a curious uh, person. And uh, uh, if we think that, uh, for example, in, in 1964, and that's how, how you know, we can, uh, I can introduce the technique of uh, photo emulsion on canvas, that's the way they are called, or artipos. If we think that, for example, he was invited in the Biennial in uh, Venice in 1946. And uh, for him, uh, you, you can imagine how important was this event because, you know, he, for the first time, he got the recognition from an international institution. So you, you should think how important it was for him, the, you know, to organize this uh, room. His own, uh, it was kind of a one-man show inside the Biennale. 
And of course, you know, uh, this is uh, 64. And in 63, 64, he was making really important uh, decollage, you know, like, uh, you know, the famous Marilyn Monroe and other important decollage was, you know, they are all dated from that period. But then what is interesting, and this is, uh, you know, the beginning of the show that we are, uh, uh, we have in, uh, in London, is that instead of uh, presenting the decollage, he was trying to also to present this new technique of uh, photo emotion on canvas. Um, it's important to know that he was uh, in prison the same year that uh, you know it was uh, 64, and the opening of the biennial was uh, June 20, and uh, he was in prison uh, um, uh, from uh, February to April. So it's incredible, but he was organizing the show inside prison. He was in prison, he's well known for, you know, the possession of drugs and uh, uh, pornographic uh, material that, you know, today is, Elisa, uh, uh, you're laughing because uh, he's so, <laughs> was a kind of really naive situation. But that time, you know, uh, you know lots of artists had, uh, had this problem. He was in Rome, he was, you know, the period of La Bella Vita in Rome, Piazza del Popolo. So imagine all this uh, uh, cultural and also avant-garde moment. Uh, uh, it's really an incredible moment in Rome. There's uh, you know, a, a bunch of artists, uh, really poor, but uh, with an incredible you know, um, will to, to survive and to make something new. So he was in prison for this reason, but no matter, he wanted to organize this room and uh, he was helped by, you know, Plinio de Martis, that was his, uh, was the owner of uh, La Tartaruga Gallery. And uh, Plinio wanted, you know, to help him. So th there are these um, um, letters between them. And uh, um, uh, we have proofs. Uh, and I think, uh, I don't know if you can show Elisa uh, the, the, uh, on, for the people that are listening to us. There are some drawings really interesting because um, uh, Rotella, in a very precise way, this is it. it was, uh, as you can see, there were drawings of his own works and uh, with the, even the titles and indication to the galleries what he wanted to show in, uh, in, the, um, in the Biennale. And actually, you know, uh, he wanted to have uh, the collage and uh, 19 photo emotions. But unfortunately, there is some problem because, uh, the, you know, the fact is that the gallerist, uh, he was afraid. He, he, he thought that it was not uh, the right thing to do at that moment to show in such an important event, uh, you know, this new technique. So in some way, it's not still clear if he, um, he I don't know in English how you say that he, he was forcing the situation. So in some way, at the end, the result is that in the Bagnana, in the Bagnana there was only the, the collage. So the beginning of this, you know, the way to work with the technique of this technique, unfortunately, was not in Italy, but it was in France, in Paris, because uh, um, uh, Pierre Restani gave uh, uh, the occasion, the possibility to the artist to show this new technique uh, and uh, he opened in uh, 65 uh, uh, an exhibition. But I don't want to, you know, uh, I, I am, you know, a little bit uh, opening too much the argument. So let's say that the show in London start, is starting with this uh, uh, real historic uh, uh, works by Rotella, and then uh, together with the Artipos, uh, sorry, with the, the photo um, um, uh, emulsion, it comes also the Artipos. That is the second kind of uh, technique that he wanted uh, to use. Also, uh, real, real, uh, they are also related to this kind of mechanical uh, way of uh, to work. Uh, because I didn't say that uh, the uh, photo emulsions, the, the way to obtain them, is that Rotella was making photographs of uh, something that could be different uh, kind of material, like uh, making, for example, he started making pictures of his own works of some decollage, projecting these uh, images on uh, a canvas that was treated with emotion. And that, so in this way, you know, he, the, the image of the decollage was uh, 
projected and remain on the on the canvas and the second technique uh, is even more radical because uh, uh, these are you know a photographic uh, passage the second one has to do with the typography that means that Rotella was going in the um, a, a, an Italian typography you know a place where usually um, uh, in order to publish a book there are some example this is a good example there are some uh, before to publish a book or a manifesto or something before to print something this technique these people make proofs of the colors and so Rotella was appropriating of this big folio they're called in Italia fogliacci that means uh, bad pieces of paper because these fogliacci then are, are uh, dropped out they are you know discarded and they, they, they don't do anything with this and instead Rotella was taking them and so the passage is uh, really uh, a mechanical passage because he just uh, put this uh, piece of paper on uh, um, a, 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 not even canvas some support and showing in this uh, very simple way so the show in London uh, represent uh, is uh, you know a, a good example of these two way of working is really the biggest uh, show um, ever dedicated to these techniques uh, Elisa I don't remember how many works uh, we uh, are in the show I think uh, I, I lost the number but there are really it is really the, the most important 72 so, yeah exactly so and uh, I think there are so many historical pieces that is really uh, interesting for a person that wants to, you know to uh, to come to you know to know better uh, you know the, the way uh, Rotella during these years and the what uh, the reason why there are two these two dates uh, 63 because he started uh, in uh, 63 to make uh, reports until 80 because the um, uh, photographic uh, um, these reports they lasted until 80 and then uh, elizabeth uh, that uh, you know made uh, an important uh, essay on this uh, group of um, uh, photographic reproduction made in during after the 70 started the 78 uh, until 80 and they deal with um, political matters. Uh, she wrote a text, and then we can, you know, work, uh, talk a little more about this. But I have to stop, otherwise I talk myself. <laughs> okay. No worry, Antonella. Um, I'm gonna pass the mic to Elizabeth. Thor. Uh, I wanted to ask you, Elizabeth, actually, uh, how did you come about um, encountering Mimo Rotella's practice? It's a great question. I think, like many people, I, I first became aware of his decollage work, uh, which he was doing before the work that we're talking about, and really, in some ways, all the way through. Uh, but I um, was fortunate to be uh, working at the Walker Art Center uh, when we were doing a big exhibition with the Tate Modern, which maybe many of the viewers here saw if they were in London, of Arte Povera, uh, which is a generation uh, after Rotella, but uh, we were kind of studying the, the social scene from, from the early 60s through the early 70s and became familiar with his work um, in, in doing some of the research for that. Um, and my specialty has developed to really be post-war Italian art. So, uh, of course, he's a major figure in post-war Italian art. So that um, is how I really became interested in his work. And I think, for me, I'm always interested in uh, both material and social histories of art, and Rotella is right in that um, crossover between those because there's so much uh, that is interesting about how he uses materials. He's constantly experimenting. He is um, never resting on one technique, and, and there's, there are connections among the techniques, as Antonella was describing, but they are uh, but, but he's never just stopping and saying, huh, this is very marketable, I'm going to keep doing this. He's constantly pushing and experimenting. And so I'm interested in, in that and how he moves from this early post-war moment where he's working with the kind of materials of the street, you know, kind of going back out into the street and seeing this, this big influx of, of advertising in, in the same spaces where um, you know, in Italian, we call them manifesto, we call them posters in English, where they would be um, up in the streets where you maybe were finding out information about 
the war. Uh, you were finding out important news bulletins, you were finding out about rations, all of a sudden become these spaces where you see Marilyn Monroe and Coca-Cola and uh, advertisements for scotch and tape and things like this. So um, I think there's this interesting social aspect to that as well, where there's um, places that were very important become the places uh, for, for kind of social life become replaced by commercial life. And that's a really interesting moment in the post-war period. And I think Rotella really grabs onto that and, and sees the potential of that. And then that continues to change throughout his career. And he, uh, you know, when, the, when there's a kind of shift from the, the, the manifesto or the poster in the street being something that is key to social life, to the kind of magazine and the home being a kind of key place for information to arrive. He moves on to doing these, these photo emulsions, these reportages and the artipo that are taken from something you would hold in your hands rather than something you would see on the street. So it's a long way of, of explaining it, but that's how I have sort of come to be interested in his work and why I remain interested in it because there's um, so much going on between the materials of the work and the, the kind of connections to the social moment he's working in. Can I latch on to this? And I would actually ask you guys the same question. Uh, maybe first, Elizabeth, you can, you know, because this is really in connection to what you were just saying. Um, you know, because the progression uh, in Rotella's practice, you know, towards developing this new media, you know, the photo emotions and the archipel. Um, how do you view that, you know, in terms of relevance in his career? And I would like to ask first you and then also pass the question to Antonella. So um, your question is how, how, what is the relevance of the yeah. reportage and the artipo to the rest of his career? I think it's an important moment because it shows him even in this moment of having early success with the decollage. I mean, the decollage are so interesting because of course they connect back to the kind of pre-war history of collage and it was used, you know, it was weaponized by the Dada artists. It was used by the, by the um, cu cubists and even some surrealists. But then um, in the post-war moment, it's, it's picked up again, um, sort of after this break of the war. So of course, those are important, but even though he has kind of this early success and recognition with those, he doesn't rest on that. Um, he, he continues to push himself. And I think there is a, there is a deep connection in how these work. Um, it, you know, the idea of a collage, of course, is to, to put things onto a surface. Um, and the, the decollage, of course, is to take them off. And this is his, his working method for, for doing those. I think with the, the reportage works and also with the Artipo, we see him using some of those same techniques. He's just shifted his focus to something that is relevant at the time and to, and to kind of continue to push his technique. There's a connection between, I think there's also a connection with what else is happening internationally in terms of art conversations at that moment. I think there's a way in which we can see his reportage works as somewhere sort of between the kind of um, chaos in some of Rauschenberg's silk screens where things are all on top of one another and the kind of cool grittedness of some of Warhol's silk screens. Um, the technique is different that Rotella is using, but I think that there's a connection in terms of recognizing that the material of the cultural world is the subject of art. It's no longer nature, it's now culture is the topic. And, and so there's a real through line from his early work, the decollages through these works. Um, they're, they're less known, I think, but they're, they're equally important. Okay. Antonella, I've had okay, great. No, I just, Antonella, please. Yeah, no, I just uh, want to follow what Elizabeth is saying. And actually, I think it's interesting. I can. I, I would like to. Um, there is a quote that I like very much of uh, Rotella, talking about you know his uh, necessity to you know to change continuously to discover something new. And he said, "I felt the need for renewal, for the discovery of something new." And out of this came the reportage. That is really something very precise. And you know, I think uh, uh, they're important because. Uh, at this point, I cannot even think about Rotella. Uh, you know, if imagine that he was only doing uh, the collage all his life. He has done, you know, the collage all his life. But in some way, for me, since I am studying him so much, uh, for for me, Rotella is not 
not uh, only the collage, you know, and uh, that's why it's interesting because, you know, the, you know, the, um, the second volume of uh, Cato Raisonné that uh, just came out a few days ago, you know, the, uh, the years that uh, we studied is uh, 62 until 73. And this is exactly the moment of, you know, the photo emulsion and the, the archipo. And, you know, there are incredible amount of works. So it means that you can see, because there, you know, you can see the chronological passage. You can see how in, at that point, for him, the collage was important, but not so much. He was so much concentrating, you know, on uh, this uh, uh, new way of, uh, you know, of, a, of a, a way to communicate that uh, I think uh, we should respect his way of, uh, of thinking. And, you know, from the historical point of view, of course, you know, these are the period, uh, you know, he, as Elizabeth said, he's not alone. You know, there are, you know, uh, new data, pop, uh, new realism, and, you know, he, he took part in the Mecca Merck art group. So, you know, that they, they were all following the same goals in some way. And, you know, the, the photo uh, emulsion canvas and artipos, you know, they, they are um, in some way connected with the, the collage because the main topics, as Elizabeth said, is the not is not nature is the city is the object is the mass communication object and Rotella was you know is changing technique but is still relating to that uh, topic he's obsessed because you know first he went to Rome and you know you should think at the moment that you know after the the war the, you know the situation is dramatic and the city is uh, almost destroyed and the people are all poor but but at that moment you know in the streets there are these first manifestos and you know is a, a sign of uh, people are you know starting to you know to to live again and so that, you know and then there is the a moment that there is uh, the economic boom in italy and so it is a moment of incredible energy there is cinecittà so the manifesto is really an object that takes his attention as even this new kind of works, uh, you know, the man manifesto and the poster and the, the, uh, the uh, magazine, the postcard, they are all objects uh, of communication. And so that's why I think he's putting all his attention. And, and, and I think uh, uh, to come back to your question, Elizabeth, yes, I, um, uh, Elisa, I think is, uh, is an important moment. And if you, you want, uh, to know really well Rotella, I should consider this to, together also with, you know, the, the other uh, works that he made with blanks and the, uh, later with other techniques. But uh, it, 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 Rotella is a complex world. It's not only the collage. That's uh, the main uh, message that I would like to, you know, to try to, to make people understand. Yeah, I would say as complex as the city. In a way, very layered socially and you know personally. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I and wanted to, to add yeah. one thing. When he made the show in Paris, uh, at the, you know the wife of uh, Ressani Gallery, he showed a, an incredible, strange amount of works uh, that the subject was the Pope, and it was Paul the Sixth. And so, in my, you know, not by chance the, the, the show was not successful because this team, you know, a religious team, so it's really incredible, you know, and in fact, you know, was not well received by the, you know, the, if you read the reviews of the time, you understand that the, the critic, the critics that didn't understand very well the situation. So it, it's, you know, it was a really big change, but still, has to do with the city, as you said, there is a complex city, and you know, with this uh, historical subject. Uh, so his uh, radar, as he was calling, you know, uh, his, his mental radar was, uh, you know, looking everything that was happening around him. For him, it was uh, really, you know, a point of interest. Look at this. Imagine this works, you know, kind of. Uh, not almost black and white after all the explosion of colors of the collage. This is really, imagine the, the shock when the Rotella was presenting this kind of works. That's why they are so interesting, or at least I <laughs> believe. But yeah. 
Elisa, are you there? Yeah, yeah. sorry. It's okay. um, one second of technical feeling. Um, talking about, you know, things that were going on around Rotella in terms of, you know, uh, notable events. Uh, I would go on with Elizabeth uh, and perhaps ask her, you know, to talk about the photo emotions that specifically address political themes, because uh, we know you've written extensively about them, so you're probably the best one to talk about them. Sure, absolutely. Um, I, I think one of the things that we're, we're talking about all of the the reportages, but uh, I think there's a, he starts doing them, you know, in, in the early '60s, really around it, part of an international conversation. Um, if those works had been seen, I mean, I love um, Antonella's essay in the catalog for this show because it goes into this this drama about uh, what was shown in the Biennale in 1964, um, and it, that of course is the kind of pop Biennale, and and this is the one where the kind of American pop artists make a big splash. Um, if these works had been seen then, I think they would, the, the, the reportages had been seen then, I think that we, there would be a, a different reception of, of Rotella in general in that, in that moment. But of course they were not, uh, as the story goes, I'll leave it to you to read it, uh, uh, Antonella's wonderful essay in, in the catalog. But then, and so then he, he moves to Paris and he, he has the show of the, of the works of the Pope um, and then goes on to making the Artipo and then he comes back in 78, 79, 80, and does another very kind of constrained series of the reportage. And this is a, a moment that's very interesting. It's at the end really of this period that um, is known as the Anni di Piombo or the years of lead in Italy. It's a, uh, kind of the, the end point of this decade of political unrest. Uh, the, we see three of them here on the screen. He's taking, images straight off the front pages of the newspapers, um, images of a member, uh, as you see on the left, of the Brigate Rosse, the Red Brigades, um, who is uh, uh, someone who is someone who's uh, killed by them uh, coming out on the street. And then there's a letter from the uh, Pope that was published, uh, I believe, in that, in that you see in the kind of upper right-hand corner of the image on the left, condemning uh, the Brigate Rosse. You see the, perhaps the most um, signal image of these years uh, is this work. Uh, the, the title of the work, I believe, is The Martyr. Um, and it's a, an image of the former Italian Prime Minister um, Aldo Moro. He was uh, sequestered for um, more than 50 days, by the, kidnapped by the Brigate Rosse. Uh, he was, this is the typical image that you would see of him with their flag behind, and he would be holding a newspaper to kind of show proof of life while negotiations were happening. Um, to try to secure his release, which of course unfortunately did not happen. He was assassinated um, by the Brigate Rosse. Uh, what I think is interesting about these and what, the way that Rotella is doing them, he's not further sensationalizing these images. And I think that's important to note. Uh, he's not just sort of taking this sensational material and kind of turning it back out to, to, to re-sensationalize it. But I think he's showing us, because he's taking these images from the media, showing us in some ways the complicity of the media with these events, with creating the kind of public terror, the way that the media, uh, these, these images that are over and over again on the, the covers of magazines or in the front of the newspaper, those are the thing that the, they've become sort of the weapons of, of terrorism in these years, that the, the, the media becomes complicit in that. Those are the images that kind of burned in our memory. And, and this, uh, I, I think there's an interesting connection between his technique where he is, uh, kind of literally burning an image onto a canvas with this photo sensitized uh, canvas. It's sort of literally burning an image onto it with light. It, it's similar to the way that these images would um, sit themselves into our consciousness in these years and, and uh, become really kind of signals for these years. I mean, there's so much interesting things we can say about these. I, I, um, He's not alone also in doing this. Uh, there, are, there, are, there are others who are looking at this period and, and kind of, uh, you know, Alighiero Boetti is an, as another example of someone who's doing this at this moment, uh, looking at the kind of covers of, of newspapers and especially these images from the Anni di Bombo and putting them out there again, not to re-sensationalize them, but to ask us to look at them with a different 
lens. I mean, it's, it's not entirely dissimilar from the, what Warhol is doing with his Death and Disasters series. Um, he's, he's not asking us, in my opinion, to, uh, to he's not, you're not re-sensationalizing them. He's asking us to look at them with a different kind of view. We look at the newspaper with one set of, uh, with one set of lenses. We look at an artwork with a different set of lenses. We have a different way that we approach it. We have a different um, kind of set of attention that we bring to it. And so I think that he's asking us to bring that different lens, that different attention, that, that longer look, that more contemplative look at these images and how they operate in the culture with these uh, reportage from, from the late Anis Bionbo. Uh, I, I would like to add a little, Elizabeth, perhaps uh, um, it's important to say this, um, what's happened to him in 77, that he was in Milan, and he just, you know, I think uh, by chance he ended up with, uh, he was in the car with his assistant and just by chance uh, he was inside uh, a political uh, riot in Milan and he was uh, wounded yeah. uh, in the face. So I think that's also very interesting that, you know, he got uh, such, uh, you know, uh, is, uh, traumatic uh, impact in this way. You know, uh, it was really in this uh, terrible, dramatic moment in Italy that it was really incredible tough because, you know, there were deaf people, guns, and so it was, uh, but uh, as you said, it was an incredible, uh, smart way to, you know, to, to relate with the historical events in this kind of uh, not uh, uh, expressionistic way but uh, very objective, just uh, to show us uh, these uh, uh, images. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So, talk, yeah. sorry, and, uh, Elizabeth, did you want to finish or not? No, no, go ahead. No, no, I, I, it was me. Just I want to say uh, that uh, um, in the field, uh, staying inside the, the photo emulsion, uh, one topic was political, but it was also a sexy uh, uh, moment uh, that he was, uh, you know, making reports with uh, this um, for the motion with the, the subject was, you know, uh, really sexy uh, symbols. And I think uh, has to do with the fact that, you know, when uh, Rotella went out of prison, and he left Italy because I think, you know, you should think that Rotella is a man of the South, no matter. <laughs> so I think for him, uh, was not able to be uh, ironic about the fact that he was in prison. For, for him, it was a big drama, and I think uh, uh, it's not by chance that he decided to leave Rome. Also, because uh, you know, in '64, you know, was a, you should think the same moment of uh, in the Bayern in Venice, Rauschenberg, uh, you know, won is a famous story. So that moment was, you know, is you know, a moment when. Uh, Italy, there was a big uh, split of uh, the, 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 you know, the, the um, incredible situation that, you know, the avant-garde people like, you know, Cardi, Dorazio, Mauri, all these people, they were in Rome, you know, uh, for, uh, for the Italian culture, you know, for contemporary art, the, the fact that, uh, uh, that um, Rauschenberg won uh, is, is, uh, was a uh, a, a drama in some way. So, it's, you know, put this uh, and uh, together with the fact that he was out of prison, then he left Rome. Perhaps he understood that, uh, you know, this uh, magic moment uh, uh, ended. So he went to uh, Paris and then he, you know, he, he was uh, in the, during the years uh, 68, when there was, you know, this uh, kind of uh, also sexual uh, revolution, he was there. So he enjoyed this moment of, you know, uh, uh, cultural revolution. And then, you know, these subjects that are also in the show in London, you know, they become quite important for him. And these are all works that are dated 68, 70, 71. So I want just to add this other uh, information. Great. And he, also, uh, he also makes a, a re sorry, he also makes a reportage of the process of his own trial. Uh, yeah, right? exactly. I don't know if we have an image of yeah. that one. Yeah, the uh, 64. I have it in a book I yeah. can show. Yes, please. Uh, <laughs> no, this uh, is sort of to use his own trial to, as a yeah. subject of, uh, for the Wilson. Yeah. Yeah. Meta news, I would say. 
<laughs> so since uh, you know Elizabeth has been showing a book, I think it's time for us to talk about the catalog of the exhibition, yeah. Antonella. So I, yes. I would ask you to. Let's make a publicity. I want to show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's uh, a, uh, you know, it's a big uh, work, and you know, I I think we and I'm talking also to in this way in this case also to Elisa. I think we made really you know and uh, a, a big job, and I think also you know I have to thank all the team of the gallery because they really helped me help us uh, a lot. And I want to say thank you also to Elena Bodecki because she is the, uh, the one that designed the book. So I think it's really, you know, a, a well done uh, job. And uh, the way we, you know, we decide to do the book in some way uh, has something to do with the, the other catalog that we made on blanks. So it's very simple because there are two essays. One is uh, by me, the other uh, is uh, by Veronica Locatelli, that uh, she's working in the Institute, and I work on photo emotions, and Veronica on RT Post. And then uh, there are all the, you know, uh, there are um, at the central part of uh, the book has to do with, uh, you know, um, um, there are reproductions of works, not only of the works on, in the show, but, uh, you know, of course, there will be an asterisk that, in an asterisk that uh, says which one in the show. But then, you know, there is uh, a good, uh, I think, uh, a good amount of uh, uh, um, reproduction of uh, uh, this uh, moment of Rotel, and there are some quotes near the, some of these uh, works. But then there is also, I think, a very special section and uh, in this case, I have to thank uh, uh, Veronica again, but also Elisa and um, also uh, Carla uh, Schoeff of uh, the Cardi Gallery, because the idea that we had is uh, to describe for each of the works, in this case, only, uh, you know, we're dealing only with the works that they were in the show, to make a research of uh, the kind of uh, uh, manifesto of a material that Rotel used. And, uh, you know, I was pushing because, uh, in fact, I said to them, I, you know, we shouldn't do a critical uh, discussion, you know, a stylistic discussion. We should just uh, to stay inside facts and, you know, to, this, to try to to tell people, to tell the reader what uh, uh, in, this, in the work uh, um, we, are, we are seeing. And so there are, you know, you know, I must say that, you know, uh, um, in some cases for me too was really important because, you know, I didn't see, you know, they were incredible, uh, you know, with the lens, I guess, because some, sometimes you find, uh, because, you know, there are many layers uh, overlapping each other. So sometimes, you know, I didn't see some of these uh, writings, uh, you know, uh, from they, uh, where they come from. So I think that also, you know, a section that uh, can be really useful. And, uh, I, you know, I congratulate because it was really a great research. So perhaps, Elisa, you are the one that can talk a little bit. Uh, as you, you know, I don't know if you have some pictures to show to I us. absolutely do. Uh, I chose together with Carla a few examples that I just, you know, I think best illustrate, you know, the process. Fantastic. Um, I mean, you know, as you were saying, to be honest, we went a bit crazy, you know, trying to look at, find the, all the layers and, you know, you have alpha words somewhere and then you want to find the old image. I mean, you know, they, they've been haunting us uh, sure. day and night for months, uh, you know, <laughs> completely <laughs> honest about it. So I'm just going to share a screen now with, um, first we start with articles and then I have a photo in motion. Sure. Uh, just to talk about very briefly, as you said, factually. So I'm just showing you where they come from in terms of uh, image sources, yes. pretty much. So one moment. So this is uh, a work from 1966. This is Venner Imperiale. Um, I mean, in this respect, this is maybe possibly closer to the subject matter that one would be used to seeing. Uh, for Rotella, you know, from the decollages that are, uh, you know, deriving directly from cinema posters. Um, here you see, like, 
two images that are components and one is the vertical post of as it would, you would have seen in, in the street really as such and the second one cuts across. So the main image is Venera Imperiale, you see the poster which was originally utilized here uh, to the right and then to the left you see the other one which is cutting across which is for uh, another movie by Polanski this time Repulsione. Um, so this is how they're, you know, roughly kind of placed together. I mean, we have to think about what the process of the art people was, you know, that they are in all effects actually uh, found objects that Rotella finds at the printing shops, basically. Um, you know, and it's incidental how the placing is and what the colors might be, um, you know, in the in the proof that Rotella chooses to use and the way, you know, it then decides to mount it on canvas, for example. Um, so, I mean, in this case, if we go into the subject matter of the movie very quickly, the both films are actually uh, addressing the lives of uh, two women. So, you know, on one side we have uh, Pauline Bonaparte, uh, so, you know, like the heroic uh, distressed woman in a way, and in the other one in uh, Repulsione, by Polanski, she is a woman who is haunted by a, a villain. So in a way, they're both quite tormented figures for very different reasons. Uh, this other, then I decided to select an art tipo. Uh, it's actually a family of three. That's how I'd like to look at it. Uh, two of the works we have in the show. Um, the all three from 1966. I'm, I'm saying, you know, it's a family of works because the so one of the source images is communal between them. So we have Untitled, then we have Rêve Doublé, and we have uh, Les, Les Deux Amis, uh, which we don't have in the exhibition, but uh, I mean, we have it as a sort of reference image in the catalogue. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you see here, basically, um, you have the same base layer, which is an advertisement, a French, you see it better in the Rêve de Blé image, really. Uh, it's an advertisement from a lingerie brand, a French lingerie brand. Um, his name is Rosie. You can see like a little rose, for example, or part, it's partly covered by the blue triangle. And the cropping of this image, the way, you know, it appears across, sorry, I knew that was gonna happen. It appears across the tree, is absolutely uh, different. So, you know, in this case with Untitled, you have a focus on the right-hand part, top right-hand part of the poster originally. Then you have, uh, you know, now it's kind of more from far back, who is you know, perhaps a different size to start with, you know, the Rotella found as a printing proof, um, but the focus is diffused. And then as it comes in again, uh, in this, for example, you can kind of distinguish the face of the model to the left, which we wouldn't really be able to see in the other images, for instance. So, you know, this for me is really interesting because it proves the point that each of these images that were found in a way, they kind of functioned uh, within Rotella's practice as units of visual language. That it kind of, you know, scrambled, they scrambled, they reassembled, and they return, um, you know, in different works from about the same years. And this is the the source image. Uh, also, the interesting thing that you know me and Carla found sometimes when we were trying to, you know, find the origin of certain writings that would you know, it would be half seen under a certain light, uh, was look at the back of the work. Uh, this is uh, the back of Untitled, for example. So in the, um, in the image originally, what you see is only this R2 to the right, almost on top of the model's face, and it's reversed. So if you go to the back of the work, then you can actually see what that was from. So this is a massive poster from uh, advertising uh, the brand Arthur Martin, again, this is a French uh, advertisement, and it's the advert for a fridge, for instance. 
So, you know, we're basically, uh, it's, it's taking us in into the everyday world, really, you know, through these adverts. They would have been billboards, they would have been, you know, uh, in other instances, in a smaller scale for magazine, there would be, you know, double spreads, uh, like it is for the Rosie advertisement, for example. So, you know, it's very interesting to see, you know, the combination uh, of images um, that Rotella decides to use, because, you know, literally they are really found. Uh, I'm going back in time now to uh, a photo emotion, uh, which is one of the early examples because it was made in 1963. Uh, what we found very interesting about this work is that, in a way, uh, we were trying to find or make sense of the scale. Uh, this is an Ita Ekberg um, in uh, a movie which is called Boccaccio 70, which is um, actually a multi-episode film from 1962. Uh, there is one of the episodes which was directed by Federico Fellini, who is, uh, you know, one of the uh, most revered, I think, from, you know, by Rotella himself, because he dedicated so many works to uh, his films in different formats. Uh, I wanted to show you in this instance, uh, actually a little clip from the film, uh, because we really see like, you know, the. Um, the scene coming alive. Uh, Anita Ekberg, uh, in the movie, she is uh, basically playing herself, and she is this diva um, who literally, you know, she is a billboard. Uh, she's advertising a milk brand in a very seductive pose, and this is really disturbing for uh, one of the citizens that live in the area uh, of Romaior. You see the palace in the back, which you might distinguish. So I'm just going to play this little clip for you just to uh, have an idea of yep. better <laughs> idea where it's coming <laughs> from. Tu, Sodom e Gomorra! Ora sono proprio sul pezzo di te, Borruchino. Sei tu che vedi un occhio spagliati. Mi fai una gran pena. Io sarai una... 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 But you can't even imagine how big I can be. Adesso mi spoglio qui, davanti a te. Non è questo che desideravi? Yeah, I think that this film for us was a total eye opener. Yes, I have to say, like I was not familiar with it, nor was Carla. Um, Only to to see a moment of Fellini movie, huh? you stay forever there. <laughs> yeah. <It's a> magic. <laughs> um, so I'm kind of, you know, getting close to wrapping up, really. Uh, Antonello, I wanted to ask you, like, how do you feel the exhibition that we are hosting here in uh, Cardi Gallery London uh, is helping to, or contributing to, um, you know, the knowledge of Rotella's work internationally? Yeah, as I, as I said to you, you know, I really hope uh, that the people, you know, unfortunately we were not lucky because the opening was in March and there was, you know, as you said, the terrible situation. So really we had, uh, you know, a few days <laughs> to show and now it's open again. But uh, of course we are all living in a, such a dramatic moment. So, you know, I hope if people can have a chance to see, you know, all this works together. I think it's a good way, they have a good chance to, you know, to have uh, um, the, you know, a kind of, uh, uh, really the possibility to see, you know, in a chronological order, because, uh, you know, the sequence is chronological, because I just wanted, you know, to follow, you know, uh, a chronological uh, situation, you know, to see in that specific moment what Rotella was doing. So, I would love to make this show to in Italy because you know it would be nice to to repeat in some way. But uh, hopefully, you know, when 
you know, the shows, the show, the, you know, uh, last a few months, unfortunately. So um, thank God that we have the catalog and I really hope, you know, this will be an instrument that uh, can last and the people, if they have a chance to read, you know, all what we have uh, found uh, as a researcher of that moment uh, would be really, I hope it would be helpful. You know, it's interesting because the same moment that we are doing this catalog, we were closing the second volume of the Catalog Raisonné that more or less is the same, you know, has to do with the same moment. So for us, it was important because we really had the chance to deep, you know, to go in a deep way. You know, the example that you made, the, the kind of research that you show Elisa, you know, to find all these, you know, manifestos, the sources. Imagine we do this for all the works so imagine how complex it is uh, to study, you know, uh, Rotella's because, uh, it's, it's, you know, there are sometimes there are some problems with the dates of these works. So, so you know, it's crucial if you know we are really looking for historical, uh, you know, um, facts. And so if we found that a, a movie came out that date, and you know, this all you know help us. So, you know, also some uh, objects, you know, when the, that kind of car came out, you know, there are all, uh, you know, uh, little facts that they're so important for us in order, you know, to help to, to, to put, uh, you know, in the right way, you know, all these uh, works. So I hope, you know, the show will help. Thank you, Antonella. Elizabeth, what's the perception of Mimorotella's work in the US? It's a great question. If you can you know, yeah. tell us a little bit about it. I mean, <laughs> we know that you've been discussing this previously with uh, Germano Ceyland for the other catalog, isn't it? Yes. But, you uh, know, if you the, can maybe enlighten first, us a little bit. When the first volume of the catalog resume was published, uh, I was fortunate to do a conversation with uh, Germano Ceyland uh, in New York. And I think that was a great step toward um, making his work better known. I think, you know, to, so, and, and Germano, I think in general, is one of the people we, we look to as, as being really important for making Italian post-war art known in the United States to the degree that it is. I mean, really his, his work and important shows he's done over the years uh, at, at PS1 and, and at the Guggenheim were, were really important for, for the spread of, of that knowledge in general. I think there's this, you know, there's this truism about uh, kind of 30 years between the kind of critical reception of artwork and the historical reception. And we're kind of really just getting to that point of historical reception for uh, Rotella. And I think that the, uh, the work of of the foundation has been, and the institute has been so important to, to making that possible. Uh, there have been some other uh, important exhibitions uh, in New York, as well as uh, some, some institutions that have really, um, especially in New York, made uh, Italian modern art their, their subject. So we have now uh, the Center for Italian Modern Art, we have Il Magazzino uh, in, in upstate New York. These are really important institutions. It's, um, it's all in the, it's all kind of centered around New York, but uh, they are bringing in scholars, they are, um, th they are doing exhibitions, they're hosting talks like the one I did with Germano. And I think these are all important steps uh, toward making uh, Rotella's work and the work of other Italian post-war artists better known in the United States. The, the story of uh, you know, New, the New York art world, uh, the New York school, the post-war American art, the New York school, pop art, uh, neo-data minimalism has been so dominant uh, for so long in the United States. It's really important that these uh, that these other perspectives, these other stories, are being told, and that's part of you know why I work on this this subject area and try and uh, you know bring it to students and to uh, to people who go who who read about and go to exhibitions about this work. So. I think it, uh, it continues to be a revelation for people to see the work that Rotella is doing, uh, to see it alongside the work of the neo-data artists and the pop artists uh, of, of his generation, because he's really part of an important international conversation. And I think we are, we are refocusing it and understanding how transnational that moment was, that it wasn't just 
about what was happening in Italy or what was happening in France, what was happening in England, what was happening in the United States, that, well, the market has tried to, you know, kind of has done that to some degree to, you know, it helps, right, at, the, at these early moments to kind of package artists this way. But now that we're moving into the more historical phase of looking at this artwork, we can take a broader view and we can see the international connections. Because I think the artists felt that it was an international moment. And they felt that this post-war moment was um, one where those, those borders were, were coming down for them in terms of the discourse. So um, I'm, I'm very optimistic that it will continue to, to move in this direction and we'll continue to know more uh, about Rotala uh, in the United States. All right, thank you. Uh, you mentioned the activities of the Institute. Maybe then I, I can pass the ball to Antonella. She can tell us a little bit about that. Okay, yes. Uh, well, we just uh, published, you know, this uh, cadre raisonné that took uh, four years, eh? because now, you know, when they ask me how much time it takes to make a cadre raisonné, I always say four years, no matter, because, you know, you, you know, I have experience, you know, uh, I made the Pelotti and it was four years. Uh, these are, you know, my third cadre raisonné. And so, you know, that's uh, the Institute was concentrating in this. Then, you know, we had this uh, big uh, uh, trauma of uh, Germano Celant that was, you know, uh, working, he was uh, working for uh, the Institute, he was making exhibitions on Rotella. So now that he unfortunately, you know, is not anymore with us, we thought that it was important to have, uh, you know, a kind of uh, um, um, scientific uh, committee. And so that's why, you know, we uh, invited and I have to thank Elizabeth for accepting to take part in this committee. And together with her will be Vicente Todoli and Vincenzo De Bellis. And they, we really hope that, you know, uh, in this way we can, you know, create uh, a new team in order to continue to make our activity. So the main goal now is to start immediately to make uh, the third <laughs> volume of the Cato Raisonné. And that's, uh, you know, uh, really at this moment we are concentrating in this. Uh, uh, then, you know, we will see if there will be you know, we always hope uh, to make uh, the big show of Rotella somewhere. We made, you know, in Rome with Germano and that was a great uh, chance. So now we are looking, it would be nice to found, you know, uh, a museum, uh, an international museum somewhere in the US or in Europe to, in order to make another big show. That's our uh, hope at the least. And that's uh, more or less what we are trying to do. So maybe in New York. Maybe New York. <laughs> Possibly. Yeah. Or San Francisco. All things considered. So, <laughs> we, listen, we, yeah, true. Uh, we have uh, then maybe another two volumes, if not, yeah, of Catalog Resonés in theory. We, you know, no, three. Rotella was really a big, uh, yes, work, <laughs> a really tough work. <laughs> so, we are discussing, well, for sure, the 12 years. Work. Yeah, for, for sure. I, I think other two for sure. Yeah, so I will be 70 more or less <laughs> when the, you know, the last one will finish. <laughs> so we will see. Uh, you know, well, we got your work cut out for you, Antonella, yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, I know. But uh, is, uh, you know, if, if you, you know, this is a work, I always say this, uh, you know, the other day I made a, this little conversation in uh, Castello di Rivoli to some postdoc uh, students. And they said, this is a job or you like or you hate it because, you know, is uh, something, it's like, you know, you should feel like a policeman, you know, in order to make research, to try, you know. <laughs> and so, no. you know, or you have this passion, or it's better to abandon and to change immediately because, uh, and I, no. I have this passion, so I am here. <laughs> Well, I'd like to thank you both very much. We're going to have our cake here. Okay. Happy birthday, Mimo. <laughs> I will I'm not lighting it because the fire alarm is going to go off. Okay. And, you know, we don't want to get sprinkled, okay. wrong kind of sprinkled. Uh, I'm going to, you know, keep going with the share screen because I have another scene from uh, Boccaccio 70, oh, okay. which, is, which is 
fabulous and it's basically set in the mood of like you know how maybe it helps us or it did help us you know definitely imagine uh what it must have been like in rome at the time when they were erecting these crazy billboards in the middle of nowhere so coming back <laughs> so i'm just gonna share that and i really would like to thank you both again uh also elizabeth for making time for us from the other side of the planet <laughs> okay thanks to you and you of course so Bye, thank everybody. It's been wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. And I'm just going to go with share screen now. Okay. Okay. Ciao.
Ma quel manifesto l'ho lasciato così, qui? Non capisco cosa dice. E no, perché questo è un luogo pubblico, qui vengono bambine, bambini, ragazzi, uomini anziani. Ma scusi, un manifesto dove lo vuole mettere in catena? No, un momento, giovanotto, oh, ascoltatemi. Voi siete stato incaricato, capisco, ma... fare più tardi, eh? Va, 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 Voi mi siete il capo, sì. Sì, sì. Ecco, allora state bene a sentire. Voi siete degli uomini incaricati ad un lavoro, fate il vostro dovere, lo capisco, ma insomma ci sono degli uomini morali. Quel manifesto è palesemente osceno. Voi non ve ne rendete conto, ma basta guardarlo per parte. So, thanks everyone. Ok. Also, the attendees uh, graced us with their presence. So and good. yeah, that was a, it was a great yeah, clip, it's isn't it? Uh, mood. <laughs> like, we can see where it was coming from, I yeah, think. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, actually. So, thank you, everyone, again. And, well, hopefully we see everyone who can come over at the exhibition, or if you have any questions, you know where to find us. Okay. All right? Bye. Have a good evening you, or good morning, good day, <laughs> wherever you are. Thank you. Bye-bye.